Welcome back to another episode of Mastering MetaHuman. I'm Jesse, and today we're going to be going over the custom mesh to MetaHuman pipeline. Let's get started. We're going to start today in a DCC package of your choice, whether that's Blender or Maya. I'm going to be using Maya for this instance. I'm going to be using Bowlin Vladislav's 3D model that you can see here on the screen for today's demonstration. When you have your asset in your scene, it's important to make sure it has the right transform values. What I like to do is import the actual metahuman head from an existing character into my scene first. You can see this one is way, way, way too small and off center from where it would need to be in the skeleton position. So what you could do is open up Unreal Engine and locate one of your skeletal meshes for the face. Let's go right here. So you could just find one um, from a different character and then right click Asset Actions and Export. This will export as a FBX that you could then import into Maya or Blender. Now you can take your static mesh for the character model head that you want, move it, scale it up, maybe a little bit too big, make sure it's in the right position, a bit up, I have to go a little bit forward. And that's a pretty good approximation. So what we could do is just hide this, Freeze Transform, Delete History, and then File and Export Selection. I'm going to export this one as an FBX export. I'm going to place it in my MetaHuman folder and just call it Base Mesh FBX. With that export, you could return to Engine, right click, Import to Game, and locate that Base Mesh.FBX you had. Here, I'm just going to set it to Not Import Materials. It's a static mesh, so there's no need for any skeleton or animation, so I could go ahead and hit import. Double click it to open, and you can see it looks just like how it did in Maya. Now what we could do is right click, go to MetaHuman Animator, MetaHuman Identity. If you don't see the MetaHuman Identity and MetaHuman Animator, make sure you have the MetaHuman plugin enabled. If you're not sure how to do that, check out my last video. Now we're going to go here. MetaHuman Identity, we'll call it MHID for MetaHuman Identity underscore base mesh. Go ahead and open that up. And just like in the last episode, we can go up to MetaHuman Identity, create components from mesh, go to base mesh, and you'll see it loads in pretty quick. So we're going to want to find the front frame. What you could do here is set the camera field of view to something really low, like 5 or 10. Let's just do 8 for this use case. Remember you could right click and control wheel scroll to increase the camera speed. Now you want to make sure you have as close of a front facing camera as possible. It seems pretty good. You can go ahead and hit the plus in the bottom left of the viewport to promote a frame for tracking. It'll ask if you want the current promoted frame to be set as the front view. You go ahead and hit OK. With this selected, you're going to see that you have one frame at the bottom called frame zero. You could go ahead and add more frames if you'd like to as well. If you want a side view, three quarter view, this might help the tracking information be a little bit more accurate later on. Uh, for just this example, we'll stick with just the current frame zero. Once you have your frame selected though, you can go up to the top and hit track markers, active frame and this is going to allow you to see all the different markers that appear. If you go ahead and right click, you're now going to be on a 2D kind of viewport plane and you can go ahead and zoom in. You're going to want to move these points to make sure they come as close to the contours of the shape as possible. You see some of these on the eye are missing quite a bit here. Go ahead and move that. Make sure we do the same for the other eye as well. You could check the folds around the nose, the lips, the eyebrows as well, make sure everything is placed correctly. Once you think it is, you go up to MetaHuman Identity Solve. I'll quickly go over the elements and the outliner as well to help give you a little bit more of a basis of what's going on there. And the first element that is going to be the identity asset itself, holding all the elements together within it. Beneath that is the face asset. The face holds all of the different poses, the template mesh, and the skeletal mesh. In later episodes, we could even dive into creating different solvers for your metahuman, 
Going into all the different pose identities, you click on the poses in the outliner. Go into your neutral pose. This will be the neutral pose that you promote from that first frame. Elements like trackers and the target here are elements that we'll get into in later videos. Also in the outliner, you have the template mesh, which if you go up here, enable it, you'll see that the template mesh is the mesh that is generated by the MetaHuman creator. And the skeletal mesh is a new asset that's created after you run the MetaHuman identity solve. With the skeletal mesh selected here, you can see all the different options here, the mesh that it just created for the base mesh for the MetaHuman, along with all the materials that make up that skeletal mesh, the physics, collision, everything that makes it up. Now, we're going to need to select a body if we're going to want to make the full metahuman. So I think this one would be a great use case for the character that we have. Make them really tall too. I also wanted to dive into a bunch of the different preview settings that you could see while you're editing your metahuman and working through this process. In the top left, you've got the lighting options, lit, unlit, lighting only, along with some exposure settings. We'll set it to lighting only for this use case. And you'll see this little A button. The A in the top left corresponds to this A, B in the center. This is how you cycle between your current mesh and the metahuman mesh. What you could do here is enable the template mesh to see it in the A side or the skeletal mesh, which isn't created yet. Something that's really good for is if you want to check how the custom mesh is overlapping with the metahuman mesh. So if you enable them both, you can see the different areas that you might see a little bit more difference. Um, right here you can see in the nostril, a little bit in the neck, and the ears here, along with some forehead deformation. If we go ahead and disable that, you can do the same on the right side as well. So if we go to B, you can enable current pose over top that as well, along with changing the lighting. You could also go to the wipe section if you want to slide it across like this. You could then use this if you want to kind of fade the opacity back to the original. And then if you want them side by side, you also have that option at the top. Along with this, there are the preview scene settings. If you want to turn off the environment, have a black background, change the environment cube map to any of the defaults or any of them that you've, you know, installed on your own. Show floor, show grid. And if you want to enable or change any post-processing options or editing as well. Now that we've gone over that, with the body selected, we're ready to click the Mesh to MetaHuman, Skeletal Mesh, and Full MetaHuman. Here, it might prompt you to log in again if you haven't already. And it is now creating the MetaHuman asset that will be ready for you on the MetaHuman Creator website. Once it's created, you'll get this notification saying that the skeletal mesh with an embedded MetaHuman DNA is now available in your current browser. A MetaHuman is also available in Creator and Bridge in the My MetaHuman section. Go ahead and hit OK. And if we go up to here and we swap this to B. Now if we go up to the top right, we have the skeletal mesh option now that we've gone through the mesh to MetaHuman pipeline. With that closed, if we go up to Window, Pixel Bridge, MetaHumans, Login, My MetaHumans. We should now see this MHID base mesh. Go down here and we're just going to import a low optimized version. And while that's downloading, we could open up the MetaHuman Creator. All right, and once you open up the MetaHuman Creator, you can see your character is uploaded. You go ahead and hit Edit Selected. Right now it's a little low quality. Sometimes it happens because with the MetaHuman Creator, you are streaming an instance of Unreal Engine, essentially, from a different machine. So sometimes if that stream doesn't have the bandwidth, you'll see these lower qualities. Uh, but from here, you're all set. You can go back to my first episode if you want to see how to use the MetaHuman Creator but essentially this is the mesh to metahuman workflow. One thing I'd like to note though, is there are some drawbacks to this system. By using the mesh to metahuman pipeline like this, you are not maintaining the UVs from your custom mesh. So if you built textures, normal maps, things of that nature, they're not gonna work for this current um, metahuman, right? 
and with that you might not also be achieving the highest quality of the mesh that you might need. Uh, we'll go into optimizing the mesh itself in further iterations. I want to make another video showing you the conformed mesh pipeline and how we could further push the quality uh, using the mesh to MetaHuman. And lastly, it still has to sort of fit the human face. Um, that's why it is called MetaHuman after all. There are some other ways around that though. There is a plugin that is morph target based that we're going to be going into a little bit deeper in the next video. But that one is a little bit more topology sensitive, whereas with the custom mesh to MetaHuman pipeline like we just showed here, you could have whatever topology you want. It could be terrible, try, whatever. It doesn't really matter because it is creating that new topology where in some cases that might be desired, but in others it might not. And that's going to be a wrap on today's video. Next week we're going to be diving into the Mesh Morpher plugin and seeing how we could further customize our custom meshes within MetaHuman. Keep on learning, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.